All right, so we'll change gears completely and move to CTEF and a little bit of an diagno interesting diagnostic case. So this was a 59-year-old man who had just a COPD history who's referred for evaluation of suspected CTEF. You can see the history there, about 10 years of shortness of breath, um, and recently that had worsened. Um, had had an outside echo that showed pretty significant RV enlargement with estimated pressures of 55. And was referred because CT scan had showed um, big dilated pulmonary arteries, but a lot of thrombus inside the vessel. And this was felt to be almost certainly CTEF due to the pulmonary hypertension. And the patient was transferred for consideration of an endarterectomy. On exam, the patient look, looked okay, was comfortable at rest. Pulmonary hypertension on exam, a right-sided PA brewery was heard over the lung field, and then he had very fairly dramatic clubbing noted. So this was his chest x-ray, which showed very, you don't need to be a radiologist to notice, very large pulmonary arteries and somewhat dilated heart. Lung fields look clear. I'll show you a few CT images that were obtained. You can see that markedly dilated main pulmonary artery. And as we go down, you can see on the left there, that left descending pulmonary artery. And you can see this eccentric thrombus here in the left descending pulmonary artery. And as we move down, you can see this artery filled with clot. And you see a lot of eccentric clot located bilaterally. So pretty significant. Seems like a clear diagnosis, but I thought we needed some additional testing. So here's your question. What diagnostic test would you do next? Pulmonary angiography, go right to right heart cath, a VQ scan, or an echo with bubble? Now, obviously, we may do more than one of those, but what would be sort of the key test that you would want to do next? Okay, so most you'll pick VQ scan and some pick right heart cath. So, so Vic, I'll ask you, I mean, do you agree with the audience here and why? I mean, you have a CT already showing what looks like clot. I mean, why? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Why get a VQ scan? Yeah, I, 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 why think do you need it? I agree with the audience. I think you're struggling with trying to figure out what the right test is. I'd want a VQ scan personally, but ultimately, we need more than that for sure. Okay. So but I want to see what the perfusion's like. Is this, is this, if this is a normal perfusion scan, that really helps me a lot. Yeah. It, it, because I know it's not going to be CTEF. It's a normal VQ scan. This could be, is this eccentric clot, lining clot, uh, something else. But it, it, it's not CTEF. The VQ scan's normal. So. So there's your perfusion mm -hmm. scan. Um, you see ventilation on the right. There's a little bit of air trapping. The patient has COPD in the, right, uh, in the upper lobe there, left upper lobe. You can see the perfusion scan, eight view perfusion scan, and it's pretty unremarkable. Um, what do you think, Oana? Uh, well, I, I would say it's remarkable um, in the sense that it has a modeled uh, appearance. Mm. So it's not normal, but mm -hmm. definitely is not compatible with CTEF because you do not have multiple mismatch defects uh, where you see uh, in, in, uh, in CTEF patients. So it's a big discordance between the VQ scan and the CTPA uh, finding. It looks, like there's, it looks like there's some holes in the lungs, but the PAs are big, and even the smaller PAs are right. big. So it looks like there's some holes, but it's, it's just the PAs. And you look at the edges of the perfusion, the edges look pretty good, like it'd be pretty unusual in CTEF. Uh, yeah, so it's abnormal, like, absolutely. Like, on a set. Rick's point about this not being a defect, but actually being a very large pulmonary artery, mm -hmm. is something that we have to point out all the time. You so can, yeah, you can make out the uh, large PA on the PA view, on the AP view, mm -hmm. um, and the shape of the heart as the uh, exactly right, exactly right. So like this a chest X -ray. yeah. So this VQ scan is not at all suggestive of CTEF. Um, we did get right heart hemodynamics, as shown here. The patient did have significant. Um, well, Val, why don't you run through this real quickly? Sure. So um, it's interesting. The radial pressure is six, so that's normal. Mean PA pressure is elevated, forty-one. Uh, wedge is seven. Um, I, I wonder if that's really a FIC uh, cardiac output as opposed to thermal dilution, but it's in the normal range. You know, you see you see the saturation run, and if you, you don't see a step up, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's not a shunt, because the patient could still be right to left shunting. Yeah, yeah, and actually, actually this did show, uh, you look at it, you know, there was some step up from the 
SVC to the right atrium. So well, but you, you, you have to um, average SVC. Uh, so that, fine, there's a little bit of a step up. Yeah. You're right, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah there was, yeah, I, I, there was. Yeah. My apologies, but so there does appear to be some left to right shunting here, which is sort of interesting in the patient's club, but we'll talk about that. This is a bubble study that I don't have the, I couldn't get the video to work, but there were significant early <clears throat> bubbles seen in the left side of the heart. So within the first two beats, one could see a pacification of the left heart with bubbles. So, so I'm not a cardiologist, I think value is the only one. How do you kind of tie that together? Why right, I mean, I, mean I think your first clue should have been the chest x-ray. The, yeah. the most gigantic of all PAs that we see are in the congenital patients. The patients who've had a shunt that's been going left to right for mm -hmm. years and years and years and the pulmonary blood flow has been two, three, four times the systemic mm -hmm. blood flow for, for decades. Uh -huh. Those patients have the, the most gigantic of all pulmonary arteries. And so that should have been something that you were thinking mm -hmm. about at the, at the site of the very first chest x-ray. When we mm -hmm. give an, an, an injection of agitated saline doing an echo, the, when, and we see bubbles cross immediately within the first one, two, three beats, mm -hmm. that usually means that they're crossing someplace intracardiac. When right. it takes longer, when it's five, six, seven beats, that usually means an intrapulmonary, you know, a pulmonary AVM or something like that. So mm -hmm. an immediate shunt is consistent <clears throat> with uh, an intracardiac <clears throat> defect. And we see, big, we see big PAs in lining thrombus. I think you also think about it. And AS, ASD maybe most commonly, but those kind of big PAs and when it's not CTEF, I would say if I had to pick, I'd say ASD, a big ASD or something. Yeah, so this patient was in fact diagnosed with a large secundum ASD. Um, which I didn't show you on echo, and that was felt to be the diagnosis. So what do you think were the issues here, Juana, in terms of, you know, this patient got referred for a CTEF evaluation. Where, what's the learning here? Yeah, so uh, first going back to the shunt, the echo with a bubble study diagnosed or was suggestive of right to left shunt, and the step up in the cath lab was suggestive of the Left to right, Sean, so mm -hmm. he's probably at the bi-direction, he's bi-direction. But he, I mean, he's right? clubbed, so you know that he's, but his eyes are being, he's clubbed, he's got a high yeah. PBR. But sometimes yeah. we get, see, I'm not correct, we do seem to see this bi-directional shunning, even when they're, they look cyanotic, I mean, I can never quite understand the physiology. But I think they're at rest bi-directional, maybe with any movement, they're Eisenmenger's physiology, probably. I'm, I'm sure when this person walks, yeah. the shunt yeah. is entirely right to left. Right. Right. And he was pretty clubbed, too. Yeah. Yes. Don't, for, don't forget. Impressive. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, so, okay, so this patient had congenital heart disease, but why the clot? Why the clot? Um, so it's very interesting because the really CTAF should be screened for by a VQ scan and mm -hmm. the lack of high VQ scan abnormalities would, would, give, uh, would push you mm -hmm. away from a diagnosis of CTAF. So in the setting of very large ectatic mm -hmm. pulmonary arteries that mm -hmm. uh, are associated with mm -hmm. congenital heart disorders, Right? Yeah, I mean, you just, when the PAs are so long, you can get mm -hmm. some stagnation yeah, of blood right. flow exactly. along the walls, mm -hmm. and so that can be a substrate to mm -hmm. cause that, what Poor we call flow. lining thrombus. And it's yeah. pretty unusual to get perfusion defects because you've got high flow. So you get clot, but you, the yeah. blood keeps going so through. So Vic, rarely, let me ask you a, one final on. question. Let's oh, say you would... Non it's a non-CTEF. Non-CTEF. It's a non-CTEF. So let me ask you, Vic, if, let's say this patient, you know, based on the CT, you saw the thrombus, patient had severe pulmonary hypertension, Let's say somebody had said, well, this is CTEF, let's take him to the operating room and remove this stuff. What oh would have happened? Uh, it'd be, that'd be a bad case. It, it, we, we, we wouldn't want to know the outcome of that case. I think that would not happen at a good CTEF referral center. I mean, it might happen at a place that's just starting to do the pro program, but that would be, it'd be a bad outcome to open somebody up that doesn't have obstruction. Well, so, not yeah. only that is yeah. that, you know, after you do your operation, your pulmonary vascular disease is going to be no better than when you went in, and right. it's going to be really hard to get that patient off pump, yeah. and it's oh. going to be a Yeah, problem. we've actually unfortunately heard of deaths occurring yeah. because that mistake was made where the CT was the end of the workup, they saw this lining thrombus, they went to take it out, and it yeah. was a bit, there's a bad outcome. VQ scan is, is hugely important here. That's the lesson. Um, okay, so that's the end of my case, I think. Thank you very much. Great.